Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer, and today I'm going to be playing Crusader Kings 2 Charlemagne. Uh, this is a live stream on Twitch TV, but I'll be uploading it to YouTube uh, within a couple of days. Um, I'm going to be playing as Bulgaria. I had a video up on my YouTube channel that talked about um, trying to do Georgia, which is who I wanted to do originally, but um, in the new Charlemagne expansion, Georgia doesn't exist for, I think, about another hundred years. A little bit less than a hundred years, because they were in the old gods start date. And, um, yeah, so I want to go ahead and play as Bulgaria. I wanted to kind of be an Eastern European country. Bulgaria is an interesting uh, kingdom at this time. It's uh, only about a hundred years old. It was founded in 681, and um, would be constantly fighting with the Byzantine Empire for about another 400 years until eventually Basil II would uh, overwhelm and, and destroy Bulgaria for about a hundred years until they'd revolt again and, and then eventually be completely conquered by the uh, by the Turks. But um, the game introduced, the Charlemagne expansion introduced some new mechanics for dealing with Western Europe and the Franks and the Germans and all of that, but we're going to ignore all that. We're going to go ahead and play as Bulgaria. Um, so this is our kind of home province in Trenvo. See, I guess the problem with playing as an Eastern European country is I may have a little bit of difficulty in pronouncing a lot of the places' names. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, so we've got a Demzi, or however you pronounce that, of three uh, provinces, these three here in purple. Uh, we are the ruler of Bulgaria, though, so this entire kingdom here that you can see is ours to start. Uh, we are uh, Khan Telrag of Bulgaria. Um, we are descendants of the Steep, Steep, is that how you pronounce it? Steppy, Steep, uh, people of the kind of uh, Eastern European, kind of Southern Russia kind of area out this way. Um, our religion reflects that. We are of the Tengrai faith, uh, which is probably a lot smaller than it used to be. Uh, a lot of the people who used to be part of this faith um, are, are areas that are either conquered by the Orthodox or um, Arabs at this time. Now, we have four different vassals. Um, <laughs> So as far as um, as far as our who we're controlling right now, we've got four different vassals. Um, we have, I think our family has like six people in it. We can take a look here. Here's our, our current character. Um, what are our traits here? We've are an intricate uh, web weaver. So we have a bonus in. Martial, intrigue, and diplomacy, not as good at stewardship. We're charitable, however, so that gives us some bonuses. Um, we're also deceitful, so <laughs> with one hand we give, and with the other hand apparently we take away and are dishonest. Um, and then envious, so that's not good because it makes other people dislike us, but we're also content, so... Um, yeah, we're, I guess, satisfied with our lot in life. We are unmarried right now. We don't have any children. Um, you can see here uh, our parents are dead. No children. Our only sibling is dead as well. So we need to get to work on that. Uh, we definitely want to be married um, and have some kids. Although that is uh, negated somewhat by having an elective gavelkind, gavelkind uh, which basically means that uh, the titles of the ruler are divided amongst his children and primary heir who's elected from the members of the ruling dynasty. So I, I'm not sure exactly how that works out. It sounds like, you know, you've got multiple children and your kind of lead heir is elected, I guess, by your other, you know, vassals maybe. Um, we have a decent military... In terms of our laws, we have very minimal crown authority and centralization, but we actually have pretty good size feudal levies, so that's nice. Uh, city levies, taxation, church levies, all normal. Church taxation is minimal, and uh, that's probably because of the type of church that we have as well. We could actually lower church taxation um, and uh, increase the popularity of ourselves amongst the, our vassals. It doesn't really seem to have much of an impact um, except on the church. But the nice thing is, with our current religion, there isn't a centralized uh, church for the Tengri church. So um, it's just kind of a bunch of shamans, if you have it. And uh, yeah, that may be something we want to consider. Currently no factions, although it'll change probably as soon as we start. Um, we could try and found an empire. I want to found the Bulgarian Empire, because by this point in time, uh, Bulgaria actually was an empire. And... Um, yeah, 
So technology, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got a console here. Uh, we've got Prince Vakram of Bulgaria. We start off with a pretty darn good console if you, uh, if you, um, if you care what I think. Uh, we've got Prince Vakram of Bulgaria, who is a masterful uh, diplomat. Then we've got Prince Krum of Bulgaria, who is a masterful general, although something to keep an eye on is the fact that he doesn't like us very much. Uh, we have a... Oh, why does he have a crown? Oh, he's our heir, that's why. So no wonder he doesn't like us very much. Um, interestingly enough, not part of our uh, dynasty. So that's not good. Um, we've got a steward who's a decent steward. Um... A spy master is a decent spy master, and our shaman is a uh, masterful uh, learned. I don't know, considered a masterful scholar, I guess. Um, I don't like to play a whole lot with the game on pause. I like to kind of play slowly, so we're going to go ahead and start time here. We're in 769 uh, AD, uh, which is about 100 years, about actually 98 years before the old gods start date. First thing we should probably do here is pick an ambition. I want to go ahead and get married. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now, as far as who we're going to marry, I don't really want to risk our um, our crown, if you will. Um, so what I think we're going to do is we're just going to marry uh, Sirma, Princess of Bulgaria. She has a she has claims to the title of Bulgaria, but since we're the king of Bulgaria, that seems like a pretty safe bet. We could marry someone else. A little bit of a concern is that she is 31, so I don't know... Um, if that impacts childbearing, I mean, she's definitely got several years that uh, that wouldn't. I guess it, it should be fine. I'm not really sure how the game handles that. Um, we've also she's also related to Prince Udgar, um, who isn't very favorable of us, um, but he is one of our vassals, so it'll help improve our relations with him. Um, so we'll go ahead and take care of that. It says we can create title, but we really can't. Uh, the Kingdom of Valicia, if we go ahead and take a look at the de jure... Oh, okay. Anyway, so we are going to get... We got married. We can either choose to um, basically get money because everyone's giving us money for our king, for our wedding, or we can um, respect people's wealth, which we'll do to gain the extra prestige. Um, so we are married now. We can't really create the Kingdom of Valicia um, because we don't have... One, we don't have enough money. Uh, two, we don't have all of the regions. We need to take Persician and Toraki, which are two provinces to the north. Um, so that's something we can look at. Uh, we've fulfilled our ambition to get married, so we should probably pick a new ambition. And uh, the first thing I want to go ahead and get to work on, oh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it, is having a son so we can have... Um, so we can have a successor uh, who's part of our bloodline. So we definitely want to go ahead and do that. Um, we've got some factions which have risen up here already. Just uh, almost two months into the game. Prince Vakram for Bulgaria has a strong uh, strength of over a thousand men. About 70% of the total force we can bring to bear. And uh, Prince Udagar for Bulgaria has a much weaker force. He also doesn't hate us as much. Um, probably because, as you can see here, when we... We'll go ahead and pull him up. When we pull him up, you can see that his opinion of us is tempered by the fact that we have marriage ties. So he's got a plus 30. That did help to... Um, where is he? Isn't he in my court? Maybe he's not. Anyway, so what are we going to do? Since we do have some guys who are trying to uh, already plot against us, I'm going to send my marshal out to train troops in my uh, provinces to try and increase our... Um, army and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I don't wanna do I wanna scheme study we're gonna build a spy network here and uh, the guy who's trying to overthrow me is Prince not Prince Crumb where is he um, Vakram we're gonna go ahead and build a spy network in Vakram's territory to keep an eye on him and uh, if necessary improve our chances of a plot against him uh, we can go ahead and research cultural tech um, again in our main provinces. I want to keep the provinces that are actually part of my demsies or whatever the heck you call that um, pretty strong. And then I guess we'll just kind of let Vakram do whatever he wants because I don't have any diplomatic stuff I want to do. So we're kind of moving along. Someone arrived at our court. Um, we founded Prince Vakram for Bulgaria faction. Led by... Oh, okay, the Prince Udagar for Bulgaria faction has been disbanded. And I don't know if that's still true. 
Yep, it's true. Okay, so the guy who we uh, married his sister, he doesn't uh, doesn't want to take uh, the claim anymore. We've got we almost have enough to take the kingdom of Val Valicia. We need to take these two provinces further north, which are part of the Magar uh, dynasty. That's a good point there, Furman. I am a Tagray, or whatever you pronounce it as, so if my wife doesn't give me a child, um, I could uh, take a concubine and have a child that way. And um, I don't know if we can improve relations with uh, Vakram here. He doesn't have a wife, but his ambition is just to amass wealth, so... Um, we could award him an honorary title. That would improve relations with him. I don't want to designate him my regent because I don't really trust him. But I don't think there's any harm in making him a master of blade or bow. Um, so it's an honorary title, but it makes him a little bit happier with us. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, we could get him married, but uh, again, I don't know... It's not really his his wish isn't really to be married. Um, we can mark him as a character of special interest. Does it make someone... That's one thing I don't know. Does it make someone happy if you make them married, even if that's not their goal, I guess? Let's see about... Uh, this guy wants to get married, so why don't we do that? Why don't we go ahead and... Um, what is Prince Crum of Bulgaria? We'll go ahead and arrange a marriage for him. Ah, I'm clicking buttons and I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Prince Crumb, let's find you a wife. I don't want to marry him to my spy master. That would just be silly. But we could marry him to this court here. Wait, is she in House Dulo? Propose, oh, well, he'd say no anyway. Prestige effects, desires a better alliance, base reluctance. Okay. Greater Gundas would gain 78 prestige from marrying into House Dulo and 400 prestige from marrying the relative of Akan. Well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? We don't have anyone else? I mean, would he say no? No, I say no to that too. Alright, well, no one we can marry you to right now that's in our court anyway. Um, what about everyone else? Spymaster. She wants to get married. So we could arrange a marriage with her. Hmm. Sue, I don't want to marry her off to a Saxon. She's not really in my faction, though, so I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, meh? She'd say yes to that. As a court organizer, would gain zero prestige from marrying into House Lowborn and 100 from marrying a shaman. So apparently he's a shaman, but he isn't a family. He's a Lowborn family, so not too much of a risk there. So go ahead and do that. Get her married, make her happier. And, um, yeah. This guy wants to become exalted among men. So what we could do is we could go ahead and give him an honorary title. Um, that improves his piety, maybe? Yay, they're getting married. Okay. Um, there's something that improves piety, isn't there? I'm not going to make him a jester. Well, maybe not. I thought there was something. Anyway, so we've got that. Um, oh, that was dumb of me. I just married off my spy master, who was pretty... Actually, she was pretty mediocre. So anyway. Um, I can make my wife the spy master. Do we trust my wife? Should I make my my uh, my wife my spy, ma <laughs> my spy master? Um... I don't really care that I lost her, though, because to be honest, she's mediocre at her job. I don't really have any other good spy masters, though. She wants to become a spy master. That would make her happy. So we'll appoint her our spy master, and now she doesn't hate me as much. That's cool. Apparently she cares that my reign is short, even though she's married to me. I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense. And actually, she's a better spy master than the previous one. So that's cool. We improved our, uh, our position. 
I'm going to dismiss this because I can't create the kingdom until I take these two provinces. So that's kind of irrelevant at the moment. And what about these factions here? His strength is declining. And he likes me a little bit more as well. So uh, the threats to our faction at this time are pretty low. I'd like to improve crown authority to low to increase our vassal or increase our army size, basically. But um, at the moment, it might not be the wisest thing. Although, let's see. My feudal vassal opinions will become a negative five. Let's see. My brother-in-law likes me pretty much. Um, Crumb doesn't really like me. That would kind of be risky. He's also a really good general, so we probably don't want to make him mad at me. But my other vassals like me pretty well, so... Or at least they don't hate me. Like might be the wrong word. I cannot create Valicia. Um, it is not. I, it doesn't let me choose that option. Well, I don't have enough money either, so that that may be part of it. You need something like three hundred uh, gold, which I don't have. Um, I kind of want to try and take this province, but the Ma from what I've heard, the Magyars are, are pretty gar darn good at stomping on people. Um, not sure if we should do that or not. Uh, what's our military situation look like? We've got 2,100 that we can raise from our Dem Demizani, and 418 from our, um... From our vassals. We have ten vassals. The Duchy of Carvuna. We've got three vassals who won't raise any troops for us, so that kind of bugs me. It's like, seriously? We could create some Ratoons, uh, which is kind of like a standing army, but they're expensive. Um, mercenaries, we can afford the Bulgarian Band, but only temporarily because they cost 750 a month, and we only bring in about 575 so we probably want to avoid that unless we have to. I have no idea what uh, what our intelligence is on these guys. We have a, a good claim if we want it against the Torquay region. Torquay? I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. Interestingly enough, the uh, Maggars are at war right now with their neighbors. So this might be a good time to strike. I don't know if it is, but they are at war with their neighbors. I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to press our... Well, I should probably raise my troops first, huh? So let's go ahead and raise our army. And we'll raise our vassals' armies. We're going to go ahead and move our troops to the border. And once they all get there, we'll declare war on them. Really? I can't declare war when mobilized? Bah! Okay, I'm dumb. That was stupid. I haven't played this game in long enough. Well, that's lame. I could totally... Nine years to stand down, no... Down, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's because I haven't played this game in almost a year, so. Um, is there any penalty to disbanding your troops and then calling right back up? Are you able to do that? So we've been in power for about a year. Nothing bad's happened. That's good. Um, apparently my vassals are fighting amongst themselves. That's not having an impact on who we can all call to war, though, so that's fine. And, uh, yeah, so these guys are still at war. That's good. So because they're at war, we're going to declare war. We're going to claim Torquay. I wish I could have two... 
um, claims at the same time you can see here. So let's take a look at the results. If we make a white piece, we'll lose 50 prestige. Uh, High Chief Cardam will lose 100 prestige. If we lose the war, we lose 100 prestige uh, and pay 275 to the king of these bad guys. Um, the High Chief of Cardam will also lose 200 prestige. If we win the war, uh, we will gain the land, I guess, is, is all we get. So we'll go ahead and do that. We've declared war. Now we can go ahead and raise our troops. And move them all to the bordering province here. It doesn't look like the enemy has anything along the border immediately that'll be a threat. And that'll give them time to kind of come to full strength, if you will. And we'll speed things up a bit till they all get into position. I don't like speeding things up a whole lot, but if we're trying to play through a whole 700-year game, it's going to be difficult if we don't do that some. Um, especially sieges will be really boring if we don't. Um, we have declared war. Uh, I'm starting to think Gundas might fancy me. Who is that? My quarter? She's 17. Um... Okay, make a move. And yeah, I know I'm a Tigray or whatever is my uh, my culture, so I do need to give her a good tumble. Okay, it's good to be gone. Um, <laughs> so it's important that we fight every once in a while with the type of culture that we are because um, we are a, a warlike people, if you will. And, um, yeah, you lose prestige over time if you don't fight any wars. Granted, I don't think a year is anywhere near too long a time to be without war for that to happen, but uh, just something worth keeping in mind. Well, I guess I'm Bulgar culture. Tengrai is our faith, which is, it's Turkish, but it's also, um, ah, what did it say? The The religion is more than just Turkish. It's not just Turkish. It's uh, Mongol as well. Turkish and Mongol nomads is our religion uh, from the steep people of Eurasia. We'll go ahead and merge our army. And then move us into this uh, territory here. Got decent martial skills by Cardan in the middle. Weaker commands on the flanks. I could replace them, but uh, we don't need to do that right now. Um, this area supply can supply up to, what, 19,000 19, people, I guess? So it should have limited, hopefully limited, um, attrition. We'll see here in a second. I, I'm assuming we will change to becoming um, orthodox at some point, would be my guess. That would probably be wise, but I, I'm just glad right now if we look at our diplomatic relations, um, well, first of all, we've got vir virtually no revolt risk. Um, our diplomatic relations are pretty, pretty, I guess, mediocre or decent with uh, everyone around us, obviously, except the Magyars who we're uh, in the middle of a war with, but... Um, I want to try and keep Byzantium happy. It's a giant superpower empire that uh, eventually extinguished Bulgaria historically. Um, Bulgaria was basically fighting them consistently from about 700-something to 1018. And uh, Basil II uh, basically crushed them in 1018. Supposedly, legend has it that uh, Basil, after defeating the Bulgarian army, cut out the eyes of 99 out of every 100 soldiers. He captured about 20,000 people, cut out the eyes of 99 out of every 100, and then left that one person with eyes to guide the, the little cohort back to Bulgaria, uh, where the ruler of Bulgaria, uh, as legend has it, died of a stroke uh, within two days. Like, his army came back. He had a stroke and then died two days later. Whether that's true or whether that's a apocryphal story... Yeah, 
I'm guessing there's probably a fair bit of exaggeration there um, because the Basil's legendary uh, victories over the Bulgarians weren't really uh, popularized so much until the Bulgarians revolted against Byzantium about 100 years after that, and uh, the, the Byzantines used a lot of propaganda against them. Um, at that point in time and kind of gave the moniker of Basil the Bulgar, Bulgar Slayer to uh, Basil II uh, over a hundred years afterwards. So Basil II is an interesting guy. I know we're not playing as Byzantium, but he was really, he was kind of, uh, during his time, the Byzantine Empire really got to its peak. Um, Basically, if we look at the de jure empire map, you can see here, they essentially controlled all of this land here under Basil II. I also think they took some of the Crimea under Basil II. So they kind of met their de jure empire claims, if you will, while he was, uh, while he was there. So you can see these uh, other armies. Nothing looks too dangerous. I'm trying to see... Oh, now they're at war with, uh, oh, they're at war with us and this other country as well, so. So we're going to have to probably turn around and go get that, that region here, but we can probably take, uh, Corson first. Okay, maybe he'll want peace. I doubt it, but we could always offer peace. No, don't want to enforce demands. I understand. It's not like we've beaten you on the field of battle yet. Let's see if we can shift south here. These armies up north. I want to. These two enemy armies together could pose a problem, but if we can isolate and destroy them individually, uh, we should have a much better chance. So that's why I'm moving south here to destroy this army. Victory! Yay! Prestige gained in battle. So we beat them. We'll see. We're up to 67 war score. Lately I've become afraid someone might want to hurt me. I am thinking about hiring no, a, no two food taste testers. And maybe a bodyguard would be a good idea. Um, food tasters and bodyguards. Anything that can save me 20% chance gains a trait of paranoid. I won't. Let fear rule my life. Do we want to be trusting or do we want to be paranoid? What do we want to be? Anyone trusting or paranoid? And I know it's only a 20% chance. No one has a take? All right. Well, I guess I'll go with I won't live my life in fear. Well, I, I can see that. I mean, I know negative two versus plus one diplomacy or plus two to intrigue minus one diplomacy. I know what the effects are. I just don't know what I want to do. So I think we'll go with paranoid a better trait. All right, we can we can go for that. Um, we can see if we can offer a peace now after that victory. Kind of jumped our war score up a bit. If not, then I'll move north and take out that army um, in Premzil. Still won't let our uh, won't won't cede to our demands. All right. <sighs> I don't like fighting battles that I have a chance of. All right, and that's going to do it for this uh, first part in my uh, Crusader Kings 2 Let's Play Charlemagne. Uh, this is a, a difficult Let's Play for me to do personally. It's a um, very... Um there's a lot of downtime in a game like this, so please, if you have any ideas, suggestions, throw them in the likes, comments, all that. Uh, admittedly, my live stream does go on for another hour and a half, so the next three parts probably won't have any other recommendations put in, but just my thoughts on that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching again, and I'm out.